the next speaker is Ella Van Cleef. Sometimes it appears that the young are seen as illogical, irrational, unreasonable, too emotional, and have abandoned science and reason altogether when it comes to our pleas for a more sustainable world. But ironically, at the very same time, the authorities that accuse the young seem to ignore the real science and the real reason of environmental catastrophe. In fact, worse than this blindness they exhibit is their need to marginalize those of us who speak out against the degradation of our environment as eco-terrorists, rather than the very concerned citizens for the future that we are, a future that we, in fact, will inherit. So let me ask you, is environmental sustainability just another overused lyric like, give peace a chance, simply a cry for the beauty of land, sea, and furry animals, or is it the key to the preservation of our planet, the elimination of scourges like poverty and hunger, and ultimately the survival of life as we know it, of human life? The call for environmental sustainability is real and must be addressed now. But what continues to be the response, year after wasted year, to this so-called overly radical demand? Let's talk about it. So let me get this straight. Demanding immediate action to prevent the further melting of Arctic ice, ice that, that holds massive sinks of greenhouse gases capable of accelerating climate change, is too radical. Standing up for the poor and the hungry, the increasing numbers of which will be fostered by those very changes in global climate, is too radical? Taking and taking matters into our own hands, largely through simple acts of civil disobedience, is too radical. But standing idly by as science continues to tell us that we have a mere five to ten year window of opportunity to prevent irreversible climate change is reasonable? I ask you, who sounds irrational, unreasonable, illogical, and without care now? Those who believe in sustainability and want to do something, or those who avoid, deny, and simply talk about it? So here are the facts, the irrefutable, scientifically provable, and inconvenient facts. As stated by the UNFCCC, a mere 1.5 degree change in global temperatures is the most significant rise that we as a species, as a planet, can safely allow for without dramatic changes to weather patterns, agriculture, ocean acidification, the whole ladder. We've already experienced, experienced today over half of that change, having seen a 0.8 degree rise in global temperatures since the pre-industrial revolution. Well, we can forget that 1.5 degrees because current trends have us on track to blow all the way past a two degree rise in global temperatures, even higher than this allegedly safe 1.5 degree number that we've been given. So if 1.5 degrees, even two degrees is off the table, what would a three degree or a four degree world look like? I'll tell you what that would look like. That sort of a rise in global temperatures would result in the highest temperatures we've seen in the past 30, not thousand, but million years. And as a result of desperation and lack of resources, it's more than likely that numbers of refugees would be in the millions. We can't sustain that kind of desperation. With all the carbon that's been released into the atmosphere, we've seen a 30% change in ocean acidity. Now to put that in perspective, a few percent change in acidity in your own body is enough to kill you. Not to mention that four out of the five major extinctions that Earth has undergone in its history were a direct result of ocean acidification. Now, despite the doomsday facts, those of us who speak about significant change are not cynics, skeptics, or even pessimists. In fact, we are the ones that have faced the facts, yet still believe. In reality, those of us who have been exposed to the real elephant in the room should be in the majority. The notion of environmentalism should be mainstream, not something that far too many see as an area of expertise. Environmentalism isn't just a flaky movement or a hobby. It's something that is inherent to our very survival. And if we can't manage to sustain and protect the very planet, the only planet capable of supporting human life, then there's very little hope for anything else because this is the basis for everything. Oftentimes, activists across the board are categorized into two groups, humanitarians and environmentalists. But I would like to point out the major flaw in this categorization being that environmentalism is humanitarianism. The two labels are intrinsically the same. Deeming someone a tree hugger is simply to deem them a human hugger because what far too many fail to see is that this isn't about saving the polar bears or the tigers or the whales. This is about saving the humans. So as the clouds gather 
and the gloom continues to descend, I think of Nelson Mandela's words, it always seems impossible until it's done. And this gives me hope, not to speak anymore, but to do, to fight the good fight, and maybe, just maybe, as, as was the case with those inspiring few such as Mandela, live to see the success of our efforts. It's not going to be easy, but it can be great. And in a society where everything seems to be so disposable, we have to remember that the earth isn't. It's all we've got, there's nowhere else for us to go. So, as long as there's still life to fight for, that's what I will be fighting for. And if you ask me, it's about time that we all started doing the same. Thank you.